Our church has been in our community for 78 years. We haven't stayed in this community by staying in the moment. God has called us from generation to generation to take a step of faith. There's been a presence in the center of the city where people can come and hear the truth of the Word of God, uh, feel the impact of the Holy Spirit and the Moose Jaw Church of God pastors and congregation have always been involved in supportive of, of inter-church events like evangelism crusades, training sessions, uh, church in the park in the summer. I think that uh, Moose Jaw Church of God has had and continues to have an impact for the Lord in the city of Moose Jaw. Without the next generation, we actually really don't have a church and the work and the body that our church does will cease. If we value our church and the service that it provides to our community, which we do, we need to be calling out the talents, the gifts and the value of our next generation. Our acronym is GLOW, which is Grow, Learn, Own and Walk. I believe that if we can help our next generation connect at an early age, there's a greater chance that they are going to be developing a lifelong commitment to the work and to the life of our church. Around 10% of our Musha population is now visible minorities. Coming here as refugees is very difficult because they not only have to learn a new language, but most importantly, they have to learn a new culture. Think about Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. They had to move from Israel to Egypt because of Herod. So they were refugee immigrants by, or themselves as a local church and as someone who is who loves God, who loves to love our neighbors. We can reach out to so many different nations that come here from 50 different countries that you can easily meet and build a relationship and really love on them. Life is pretty complicated. It is pretty painful. I think we all know those times of brokenness and uncertainty. We know them individually. They are in our church and they are most certainly in our community. I think our church has this unprecedented opportunity and there is both an individual, a church, and a community need to be a beacon of faith, hope, and love. Whether it would be a support group for mental health, addictions, financial challenges, career issues, marital crisis, we just do not have the space or the scheduling available to offer any new ministries to anyone. We've exceeded the capacity of this church many, many years ago. At the same time, the staff continue to try to put in more programs, events, but when these same people are faced with limited space, limited seating, it's a huge demotivator. The church could carry on as is without changing anything, but it wouldn't be prudent because we have so many people, so many staff and members of our church that are excited to share their faith in their unique way. They're trying to create programming and add more events. So this expansion is going to blow away all those barriers. When we enlarge our facilities here, it is going to give us the capacity to envision and to enact new ministries that are going to meet needs that I have, that you have, that our church has, and that our community has. And it's going to be life-changing. I would love to host a Christmas dinner to my students. Come to church. This is our culture in Canada. They would love to come if we were to host a big family dinner. We are very excited uh, about the new space as it is going to be addressing several uh, current pain points that we are experiencing. 
We're excited about the opportunities of being able to reach more of our inner city youth. Another exciting thing for us is uh, just the space for the check-in and check-out. There's a lot of congestion and uh, so we're just really excited to have uh, a more open space and part of that actually provides our families uh, a time to actually uh, spend time together in community. The other thing that we're really excited about with uh, this new build is the opportunity to have a sensory room. As a church, our mission is we have a place for you. That's our value. And so by providing this space, we're going to be closing a gap. Uh, that we currently have. If I want to know what kind of faith I have, I just have to look at the way that I live my life, the way that I serve people, the way that I give to the church, the way I treat my, my wife and my kids, strangers. All of it has to do with faith. And the more we step out and the more we exercise that faith, we experience the blessings of the Lord. It's not simply monetary. It's not simply uh, physical health. It is all of those things, and it's even more. Jesus said, you know, it's more blessed to give than to receive because there is something about giving that is connected to your faith and your relationship with God.